6.35, we'll get started, and uh, John is on his way, and he'll catch up with us when he gets here. Um, can we call the meeting to order? So moved. Second. Second the agenda. <laughs> Acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Um, we'll get, uh, get right to number three, discussion vote for the easements related to the public access. Al? Brendan, how are you? In accordance with the April 11th annual town meeting votes, the Board of Selectmen must take several actions in order to complete the acceptance of the four streets that, that we voted on at the annual town meeting for acceptance as public ways. Uh, and what we do now is uh, we, you have to take a vote to take permanent easement in order to establish the public ways for drainage and municipal services, basically so we can get in there and do maintenance on it, do the repairs and do the maintenance. And they, then you have to vote to adopt orders, plans, and estimates for the assessment of betterments to fund those requirements, because those re to fund those improvements, because those improvements are being funded by the residents as part of the acceptance of their streets for the public way. Um, our town attorney's firm, under Brendan's <coughs> guidance, has prepared all the necessary documentation, and I'm not sure how much more discussion you'd like to have me have with you. Well, why don't we see? Do you guys? Uh, Seems to make sense to me. I mean, as you say, this is an administrative step just to uh, get this going, and town meeting approved it, and um, off we go. Brandon, you guys have gone through this, and it seems to be legally in order. And exactly. Uh, the one thing on. I would point out is just that there's uh, three sets of documents for each set of uh, streets that, or each area that's being done. So it should have uh, six documents to sign, plus the mylars for the plans. Okay. John? A couple of things. It's, is it Brandon? Brandon. Brandon, we just, where are you from? Just uh, so everyone knows you're sure. from. Uh, Brandon Moss. I'm with Murphy Hesse, Tumi and Lahane, which represents the town as town council. And I just was going to say that this is <coughs> kind of nice. I just remember seeing these at like the annual town meeting. So it's kind of nice if there's any questions or concerns. Nice. Thank you. Great. I'll pause for a second. Hey, John. Can I ask a yeah. question while there's a moment of silence here for a second? Al, can you bring us up to speed on Walnut Tree Hill? And maybe the, the best you can. I know Laura's been handling it, but yeah. while we're on what, that let's, subject. Let's clear this All up, right. and then we can. Yep. All right. Talk. We talked about that at our street acceptance meeting okay. at the last meeting. Um, so uh, um, I'll let you get organized. I didn't know if you had any questions on the street acceptance stuff. Not at this point. Okay. Thank you. So th this is. Uh, so we're we're voting for the betterment, and we're voting for the easements. And this was all passed at town meeting. Yes. So it's just the next technical step, and this is our and our big scope plan to get all these streets under um, the correct uh, um, guidelines and then under the town for yes. their supervision. Yeah, Mr. Chair, we have a suggested motion not on our pink slip but on the Al's memo. Is that probably has that been reviewed? And okay. The one on the uh, on my memo has been reviewed by the town's attorney. Okay, great. Be the correct one. Do you want a motion, Mr. Chair? Please. Move that the Board of Selectmen adopt orders of taking by eminent domain for permanent easements on the layouts of Cornerstone, Cornerstone Lane, Blossom Street, Pine View Drive, and Pine View Lane for the purposes of establishing such public ways and any appurtenant drainage and municipal services. Further, move that the Board of Selectmen vote to adopt orders, plans, and estimates for the assessment of betterments for the purpose of making improvements to said ways in the amounts not to exceed as follows. Cornerstone Lane, $4,000. Blossom Street, $30,000. Pine View Drive and Pine View Circle, $165,000. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Good job. Um, while you're up here, I'll. Thank you, Brandon. Um, Thank you. I'll just speak for two seconds about it and, and, and pipe in. You know, we had, uh, I think there were two other applicants at the street acceptance meeting last week, and then the Walnut Tree people came down as well. Um, that is proceeding. All the people that came seemed to be comfortable with the direction it was taking. A consultant had looked at one half of the project, and I think we got a bid back on that, and there's a whole other half that has to be looked at. And then I think they were happy with the progress that the town had been taken over the last six months, maybe, or three months, Al, um, in working with the insurance company to get it resolved. So there was some we're definitely costly. taking steps yeah. right. in the right direction. That's great. There are uh, three areas of, uh, of costs. The, the town has decided to, uh, to go after the bond for the developer on behalf of the residents and whatever. Uh, 
there's so we are now in the process of developing the three sets of costs: the cost <coughs> for um, fixing the road uh, deficiencies. Uh, there are some questions about whether or not the retention basin was built as per the planning board's uh, design, or as per the the board, as per the design they presented to the planning board. And thirdly, there is a serious erosion that's created coming down by the old old bucket house and a design for that. Those three uh, cost estimates, cost projection, we put together by the end of July, and then the town will have what it needs to turn over to the attorneys for <coughs> to continue with the work with to get the bond. Thank you. Well, that's great. I, people that might not have seen your meeting, you were talking about, I'm right. sure are watching it tonight, right, Rick? Yep. <laughs> there were quite so. a few of them here, so it's good. They're, they're right on top of it. Thanks, Al. Move on to number four, which is meet the applicant. Um, we'll just go right down the list. These are for um, reappointments of applicants to boards that we um, that they've served on in the past. In an effort, maybe more pushed by me than others, but trying to get people to come in, even if they're being reappointed, so that they can put their face in front of the board. And some of us may be new and haven't met them before, so. Uh, once a year to come in and ask, you know, to have a little conversation with us for 30 seconds is is kind of what our goal is. If you can make it great, if not, um, it probably will not impact your your um, reappointment. But do we want to just run through the list? And if you're here, come on up. And are we going to vote on each of them individually or at the end? At the end. At the end. Right. So we'll just see if they're here. Uh, George Grafton. Drafton. Yeah. How are you? Sure. Come on up, George. <laughs> You're wearing the T-shirt. We figured might as well get yeah. you some FaceTime on that. <coughs> and 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 you're reapplying for the Affordable Housing Trust. Correct. Great. And also, I'm also applying for a CPC appointment at large. Right. A new appointment. Uh, I've been on CPC at one time as the representative from the City of Housing Authority for about uh, about two years, two and years. then I resigned the uh, my position in the City of Housing Authority. <laughs> and I became a trustee on the uh, Affordable Housing Trust. Uh, and I enjoyed working on the CPC very well because I think it's, it's a, that's a great uh, committee and it's, it's run well. I think it does a lot of good work for the town. I've, I've lived in a town for 40 years, so um, I'm just, I'm enjoying, I'm retired, so I enjoy uh, helping out the town. Any questions from the ward? Just observation that uh, George is with me uh, as a trustee. He's done a wonderful job and uh, position for the CPC is um, certainly dovetails well with uh, affordable housing. So I can't and you, more, recommend him more. And you don't want to do it as the liaison for the... I am no longer connected with the City Housing Authority. I have resigned. Uh, You're with the trust, ago. right. Okay. Uh, so there is another liaison from their already elected. Right. So the difference between the trust right. and the authority. Yeah, I, right. I am applying for the at-large position. I believe there are two vacancies at this Great. point. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank okay. you, George. Is uh, Daniel Hoffman here? Yep, I'm here. Come on Come down. Come on up, Daniel. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Thanks. How are you? Good. And you are also um, applying for the Affordable Housing Trust. Yep. For the uh, for a second term, I figured may as well continue for another couple of years. Right. right in the middle of uh, a few things, so I think for the continuity sake, that'd be a good idea. All right. John, any uh, observation? Yeah. It's, I'm glad you are, because just for the, the point that you made is that we're in the middle of some significant things that are going on for continuity yeah. and consistency. Um, you know, it takes a while to get up to speed, and right. of course now we have members who, who are up to speed. So, yeah. Dan, I thank you for, and George, for uh, asking to be re reappointed. Yeah. Well, thank you. Great. How many uh, are these the only two sp spots open? For this year. For yes. this year, and they're both up. Great. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, guys. Ms. Elizabeth Foster. Great. And she is uh, looking for reappointment as an archivist. Uh, uh, Dorothy O'Connor. Dorothy O'Connor, no. Um, she's for the Animal Control Board. Nancy Tull. Toll. Another Animal Control Board. Russell Clark for the Board of Health. No. Greg Harris, Not here. by Law Review Committee. Not here. Not here. Nope. 
if you guys have any comments on them, you know, feel free to speak up. James O'Hearn. <laughs> Hi, come on up, James. Didn't know I was being pre-appointed for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was already there for a while. <laughs> you will be. 27 years and been on the bylaw committee for five or six. Great. Right? Don't know what else you want me to say. <laughs> Meet two or three times a year and go over the things that we need to go over. Great. And is that a full committee? Uh, yes. It is, at this, time. It is yep. at this time. Great. And this is the only, oh no, these two appointments are the two ones that are up. Correct. Great. And um, any any comments from anyone on the board? Nope. Great. Well, thank yes. you. Thank you for coming. Say Sweet. that again. Thanks, guys. Have okay. Thank you. Evening. Great. Thank you for coming in. Yes. Russell? Yes. Come on up. Perfect timing. Okay. Have a seat. Put you right on the spot. Appreciate and you're it. up for reappointment for the Board of Health? Yes, I am. Great. Um, any questions before? No? How long have you been doing it? Would Tell us a little bit about yourself for 30 seconds. And I've uh, been on the board for uh, nine years, uh, three appointments. Uh, my background was land surveying. And uh, I think when I got on the board, uh, it was the director's opinion that it was good to have a blue-collar guy there. There were two attorneys that were on the board, and I kind of presented the good Title Lord. five background so great yes sure can i just make a comment sure. as liaison on the board of health i've really enjoyed attending their meetings very informative and each time i go i think i learned take something from it yeah uh, thanks to you frank and mike uh i learned something every meeting i um town's a better place to have you on the board of health thank you russell thank you it's been a pleasure to serve i great. hope to continue yeah. great well, thank you for coming in, and um, we'll do the voting at the end of the night, so uh, watch us on TV. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so kindly. <laughs> Thanks, Russell. Uh, Kathy Meeker is up for the Cable Television Committee. She's not going to be here this evening. Um, uh, Judith? A, she, I'm on that committee, and she's a stalwart and very valuable to have on there. Uh, Judith Byrne Ariel? She's not able to be here either. Probably says that. Paige Tobin for the Commission on Disabilities. Um, I spoke with Paige. She can't be here tonight, but she is interested in serving another term. Paul Paris, um, Conservation Commission. He's out of the country. He's, uh, he's probably up there somewhere. He's a he's a pilot. He had a CONCOM meeting last night, and he builds his entire schedule around CONCOM, so back-to-back -back days were tough for him. But he's been on for three years. He's from Hummer Rock. He's doing a good job. Uh, Dale Balog for Council on Aging. Rocco's Carabes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Rocco. <laughs> um, Council on Aging. Joan Powers. I can do that one. Council on Aging. Another Council on Aging. Meg Stillman. Can I, she's not here. Yes, Sean. I just was going to say for each and every one of those, every meeting I've attended on the Council on Aging when I was liaison. They've been very active and been at every single meeting. Right. All right. Yeah, I hear nothing but good things. Um, John Bowman, I don't see him in the audience. Uh, uh, CPA. Paul Scott, not here either, both uh, for uh, CPA. I know John's been the chair for maybe three years. Um, has done great and, and good legal advice and, and good direction there. Um, Paul is probably knows more about the town than most of us, and he's a great asset to the committee, too. Um, Stephen Litchfield. Steve's here. Oh, Steve in the back. Yeah. How are you? Good. Good. And I you're? Uh, filled in a position in the first duration of the uh, historical commission right after it was created. I was the lone peanut gallery attendee at a lot of the meetings, so they drafted me. <laughs> so this is the second time around. Great. I uh, have a lot of interest in historical stuff. My family's pretty historical. We came here when such what happened right. on both sides. So uh, I'm interested in uh, preserving some of the history of the town and seeing if we can uh, you know, save some of the old stuff that we've been losing recently. So uh, there's a lot going on. We're right now just starting to put together a demolition review, which was something that was part of the reason we started the commission when we didn't have it. So. Uh, I'm hoping we can do something good. There's a lot of Great. good projects going on. Right. Any comments? 
doing a great job. I like well, the demolition review. I'd like to see that. That'll be good. Yeah, I think we've, we're going to have something. We, we're finally okay. getting there. We, it took a while to get our feet in the water and figure everything out, but uh, we're putting together what I think will be a good package. Good. good. Well, we see you active in all the events, so we thank you right. for that, and thank you for, for serving on this. Yeah. Thanks for come, coming come in. Come to the 4th of July. We're going to have a good one. Sunday we'll be there. Monday. i got to go to that meeting now. <laughs> Christine Peters, uh, is anyone come? Uh, Cultural Council, uh, Didi is it Sprecher? No, another one for the Situ Council, uh, Cultural Council. Ed DeSalvio. Ed's not here. No. Ed's not here for the Public Building Commission. Dorothy Cook, I don't see Dorothy here for Traffic Rules and Regulation. Um, Dorothy works in the in the school department and is uh, in charge of all the transportation there. So clearly. Very valuable input to things there. Um, Karen McDonald, traffic rules and regulation. Uh, Lawrence Nyland, not able to come. Waterways. Sean, do you have anything to say? Uh, it's my neighbor. <laughs> he's a good guy. He yeah, is. he's a good guy. I don't want to step on Rick's toes. Yeah, he's very active. <laughs> well, that's good right. Guy. He's the least. Very active, good guy. <laughs> Water resource, Elise Klein. <laughs> Uh, John Hallen, ZBA. John's not here, but he's been participating for, for decades. Um, so now we have the new applicants. So those are all the reappointments. Rick, I'm going to pass over the reading to you on these. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> sure. Right. Chris Matthews, Board of Registrar. Is there Chris here? Okay. Uh, Kathy Bullock for a cable TV committee. And can you just uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be in the cable TV committee? Uh, sure. I'm Kathleen Bullock. Um, I have experience, about 25 years experience in producing broadcast for commercials, uh, advertising. I also have my teaching certification in Massachusetts for art. And I run a small theater group here in town. So all of those different artistic qualities as well as um, business qualities give me a certain um, understanding of the process and hopefully will lend uh, a new level of professionalism and organization <coughs> to the group. Great. I should probably recuse myself. Kathy's my sister-in-law. But uh, Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, but this... Right. She's just passing on information yeah. but when the vote comes. But okay, yeah. questions from anybody? I don't. Nope. Okay. Personally, she'd be a great asset to the committee. So thanks for coming in, Kat. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Richard Torsney. Not here. Hong Kong. Not here. Maureen Kahlberg. Not here. Okay. If, can I just jump in here for one second? If you guys recall, we met Maureen not she too long ago. She applied for the Economic Development Committee, I think it was, or something else. Yeah. I thought it was ConCom. Originally? Okay. No, not that long ago. So was there an opening or something? All right. Okay. <coughs> All right. I don't remember. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah, it was, so, it was uh, ConCom. That's what I yeah. thought. Right. Um, Carolyn Sachs. Okay. Carolyn Sachs. She's up for Council on Aging. Oh, there's Carolyn. How are you? Good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I read your uh, your application here. Mm -hmm. um, you want to be involved with it? Great. Any anything I've, we should know? I uh, volunteered for about almost four years at the Council on Aging. Um, I like the people there. Um, I have a good time with the with the people that come in, and I enjoy it. Great. That's all I need to hear. No. Any questions, guys? Great. Well, thank you for your participation, and uh, um, you know we'll be voting at the end of the, the meeting. I don't know how many slots are open on that. Well, we'll talk about it then. One for the new ones. Great. Thank you for coming in. Richard Mitchell. I'll read the easy ones, Rick. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Good evening. How are you? Good. I see you applied for both CPA and Council on Aging. Right. Thank you. Want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I've been in town for two years. Uh, 
been in Massachusetts all my whole life, but uh, just moved to town, wanted to get more involved. Uh, I've been an executive in both healthcare and higher education for the last uh, 25 years. Um, was executive vice president of Harvard Vanguard Medical Associates and with Harvard Pilgrim and was chief operating officer of Roger Williams University in Rhode Island. I've uh, been doing a lot of consulting um, in healthcare uh, for the last uh, 10 years. So uh, I'm interested in uh, community preservation committee. It just looked uh, looked interesting and be able to uh, you know review an investment potential, uh, you know, in the environmental and uh, historical and uh, recreational areas for town. Um, also thought you know given my background uh, could be useful to the uh, council on aging. Great. Any questions or comments? Do you have a preference? Okay. Well, the CPC looked uh, more interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. How many op just for my well, we can talk. How many openings do we have for for uh, CPC? Yeah, two. two? Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mitchell. Please. Thank you for coming in. One way or the other, you're going to be on one. I can, I can assure you that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Maybe you. Maybe both. <laughs> Lisa Fenton? Hey, Lisa. How are you? Good. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself that we probably mm. already know. I'm coming up on my 14th year as a situate resident and been fortunate enough to be on a variety of uh, groups and boards, including um, elementary and middle school PTO, um, Situate Education Alliance, and um, uh, Sustainable Situate. And I've been um, lucky enough to be, uh, have experience on the um, advisory board for two terms. And within that time, um, I think I became pretty familiar with uh, not only community needs and desires, but also um, voids and needs on the town government side and feel like I could do a good job in maybe uh, helping to focus and prioritize some of the proposals that come through to, to CPC. Any questions? Thomas? You've been on CPC for two years or a year? A year anyways. I was a liaison yeah. okay. on CPC. Okay. For a number of years, right? For a couple of years? or Three, I yeah, think. So. So you understand the process, and from the advisory committee, you were the liaison there, right. and have been act pretty active in it. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Lisa has always been an asset to, to the committees I've been on with her, and uh, um, you know you. you're very uh, very knowledgeable in the CPC stuff. So thank you for applying. One second. Yeah, I just have one question, Lisa. Um, on your application, you would just listed your lob you'd like to lobby at the state level to broaden CPA's application. How? Well, I've always felt, first of all, I'd like, like to commend the current committee for all the work they've done since its inception, I think it was 2008, was it, you've had? Um, so it's fairly new, but I think one of the things that, that we've been missing and that I would love to help lobby for, because there does seem to be a lot of um, flexible legislation right now, is that we don't have the ability right now to use any of the administration funds for things like maintenance. So. For instance, we can create a sidewalk or a trail, if you will, but we can't um, set aside any money for the maintenance of said trail. Um, or if it's a historical purpose or, you know, another type of purpose that falls under that um, purview, that we are not at this point able to use that funding in order to help support the new project that we create. And then, of course, that, that then falls back to the town for, for their responsibility and I, and I think that there's some leeway there in order to keep <coughs> the Community Preservation Act alive in the state that it needs to incorporate some of these needs as it grows. That's great. Perfect point. Thank you. And one other one that is very vocal right now too is the ability to repair fields fields and, and different yeah. things now right now you have to start from scratch right and you know particularly towns in the city don't have the land to start from scratch so you can't use those funds right now to repair um, things and that's another hot topic that I'm sure the lobbyists are all over so great thank you for uh, for applying thank you. thanks uh, George is here again but uh, 
We already talked to him a couple of minutes ago. Um, Steve McGuire. Steve McGuire is applying for CPA. Ruth Wagner. Hi, Ruth. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you. Um, I'm, well, I've, I'm a full-time Citrus resident for just the last three years, but I've been summering here for 30 years, and my husband's family has been here since 1937. Um, we love the town. Our plan was always to retire here. And so in the last couple of years, I just retired two years ago and continued to consult for my company until about seven months ago. And um, I now have the, the time, I have the skills, I think, to contribute to the CPC. Um, I, in my application, and I have copies if you don't have it, I elaborated a little bit on my background. Um, I retired as assistant vice president from John Hancock after 28 years. And we managed, I was in charge of managing all of our major client relationships and also involving sales. Um, it involved budgeting, um, project selection, analyzing them, prioritizing them, um, making sure they got done, and keeping clients happy. Um, but now that I have that time, um, it's time for me to spend time giving back to the community we live in. And this, I think this is a fascinating committee. It's the variety of the projects that they work on. They benefit everyone in the town. Um, I take advantage of them myself all the time, and I'd love to be able to uh, help them out and contribute to that. Great. Any questions? You say you were in New York State for a while? Yes. Where were I, you? Uh, I was born in New York State, uh, downstate, and then went to college up in western New York. And, uh -huh. uh, Stayed in, up there for a while and taught for a number of years, and then was in the political realm for a while in yeah. Albany and also in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah cool. Good training for this town. It, I, I love the politics, and um, it's it's a lot of fun. Fun to Germany? Nope. Thank you. Great. Okay. Yeah. Thank um, you. One quick question uh, sure. for you. Um, this is a very popular item. You know, there's there's two slots, and there's probably you know, six or seven people applying. Is there any other committee that you were interested in? Um, um, I mean, this kind of fits your background. I saw the, the good match there, but I didn't know if there was something else. Um, I, well, at this time, this was obviously yeah. the one that I, I wanted, um, I was the most interested in. I, I would consider the Council on Aging also. Um, and you see from my background in, in the insurance in the last number of years, I was in the long-term care insurance area. So we were very familiar with issues and concerns of the aging population and particularly residencies and care of them. So I have some interest in that, though I will say the CPC is my, my okay. first choice. Great. Thank you for applying. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and the last two, uh, Ralph Studley. Ralph, how are you? Good. Have a seat. You're applying for a recreation commission? Yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself. and. Sure. I, uh, I grew up in Situate. Uh, my wife grew up in Situate. We just recently moved back within the last year or so. I've been pretty actively involved you know, for the last 10 years in different sort of fundraising efforts throughout the town of Situate. Um, Jennifer Fidelli, who runs the recreation commission, is a close friend of mine and actually former business partner. We did a lot of fundraising together over the last 10 years. Um, my background is in municipal finance. I work for uh, an investment management firm in Boston. I'm the municipal product manager for them. So I have a lot of experience as far as, as, far as being the, the end purchaser, institutional purchaser of you know, municipal products. So I, I have some, I think, uh, insight into the intricacies of municipal finance, I hope. I don't know how much that will apply to the Recreation Commission, but when it comes to dollars and cents, I have a little bit of insight there in terms of how things work. And uh, really just overall interested in doing something for the town now that we're back. We have a little one, and it seemed like a natural kind of start to get myself involved. Jennifer mentioned that there was some opportunity, so here I am. Great. Any questions? Sean, any? Answer the only one I had. Yeah. Sean's liaison for uh, rec. Recreation. And yeah. um, very busy and, and really thousands and thousands of, of uh, kids run through the program. So it's a vital part of the community. Right. Um, 
thanks for coming in and uh, you know we'll make the appointments later on in the meeting no take thank care. you thank you and uh, the last one on the list is David Smith is David here okay um, before we go on to the next one I just didn't know did anybody who was on the list applying for something walk in after we started okay great So, Kim, do we just read these um, about the, the Democratic representative? Or is it, how do we, uh, uh, the rec? Okay, so these are just the background for that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. So we'll move on to the next item. Walk-ins. Um, you know, before we start the walk-ins, I wanted to just make a, a quick announcement. Um, Obviously, we're missing a, a key component of the board up here. Uh, Mr. Norton has been a, a ill lately, and we just want to pass on our uh, our best wishes. He's on a on he's on the mend, and uh, we wish him a speedy recovery. And um, like I said, he's, we see progress every day, or we we get progress reports every day, and he's definitely moving in the right direction. But for those of you that uh, that notice the void like we do, just want to make uh, everyone aware of of the situation. Um, one other quick announcement. Um, You'll see a familiar face over there on the right. Uh, Trisha was missed our last meeting because she was away at school, back at school, where they jammed a semester worth of work into uh, a couple of weeks. And uh, good to have you back as well. I know you're going to be preparing a report and, and tell us all about it. Um, but, but welcome back as well. Thanks. And thanks to Chief Stewart for acting in my absence. He did a great job, and I want to extend my appreciation to him. Great. Thanks. Are there um, any other walk-ins? <laughs> Matt, come on up. I have a uh, citation from the Massachusetts House of Representatives. That should be delivered to you, people. Right. Can you come up? Can you just come up to the mic? That way so we get you on your TV. face on television. Yeah. And well, that's the last thing we really need around here. <laughs> this way we can hear you, though, Matt. <laughs> Commonwealth of Massachusetts House of Representatives, be it hereby noted to all that the Massachusetts House, Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to the town of Situate in recognition of the celebration of its 375th anniversary of the town's incorporation. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope that for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this first day of June 2011 at the State House in Boston, Massachusetts by Robert A. DeLeo, offered by State Representatives James Cantwell. So that's for you people. And uh, thank, you. thank you all for the cooperation that you've given the uh, committee. Great. Thank you, Matt. Thank, thank you, Matt. You. That's thank you, Matt. probably a perfect segue to uh, remind everybody that on Monday, we are having a big celebration down in Cole Parkway for the 4th of July and our 375th anniversary. So uh, show up. There's going to be quite a lot of uh, activity going on. And I think we'll be talking about it a little bit later. but. That's great. Thanks for getting that, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Any other walk-ins? Chief? Chiefs? Good evening, gentlemen. Good seeing you. Hi. Yeah, um, I'll guess you guys wanted a little update on our 3rd of July preparations. <coughs> Well, we, we met in uh, executive session before, but actually we really like to get the word out. This year, things are going to be a little different. We're going to try to tone down the 3rd of July festivities in the Hamaraki and over in the beaches of Sitchin. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Bonfire-wise, you're going to have to have a permit to have a bonfire. There's a lot of restrictions on it. Any information um, you need or you need a permit, you're going to go down to the uh, fire headquarters at 149 First Parish Road. And the last day to get a permit will be Friday at 4 o'clock. Um, we're going to, um, let me say, it's, uh, it's been out of control the last few years. Between uh, the fireworks last year, we brought the, um, the state fire marshal's office with the state police with the bomb squads. And I said they were horrified at what goes on down there, and um, you know it's it's time to start toning it down and, and, and try to get, get a 
better grasp of it. You know? And so I think this is going to be a good first step in accomplishing that goal. I said it, it might not be done, over, you know, one year, it might take a couple of years, but just to, um, to get it back to uh, safe family fun, and, that, and that's what our intent is going to be. Yeah, as far as for the police, uh, we'll, we'll order everybody to work on the night of the third. It'll give us, uh, between our own people and Cohasset, the Sheriff's Department, and uh, our summer people, we'll have about 42 officers out there. We'll also have um, several working inside. And it, they'll be scattered throughout the town. Uh, you know, we'll have the flexibility to move them around I as needed. Uh, on the night of the, on the day and night of the 4th, we'll have a sufficient number, probably not that many, but enough to, uh, you know, to take care of the situation. We'll be aggressively enforcing uh, all public conduct regulations, especially disorderly, public drinking, minor transporting. Um, and like the chief said, we're not trying to spoil anybody's fun. We're, we want everybody to have an enjoyable and safe holiday. That's what it's really all about. So we've got a flyer here, which, which goes over the rules of doing a bonfire. We're not saying that bonfires are not allowed, but that you do have to get a permit for them, and you do have to run them according to the law. Um, as, as Chief Stewart said, we had uh, the state police in here recently, and, and everyone has said that it's just such a dangerous situation out there with the, with the number and the, um, and the size of the bonfires down there that it's really a miracle that people have not been more seriously hurt. So um, we are being very proactive, the police department and the fire um, department are, and like you said, it's, we're still going to have fun there, but it's just got to be um, at a reasonable level, and it's, there's going to be more police enforcement down there, and they're going to be cracking down on the violators. So, um, you know, this is kind of advance warning to, to um, beware and, and please run along the, the laws that, that are out, out there uh, um, mandating how these can be uh, maintained. Any other? Uh, you said it well. No? Great. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully we'll have an uneventful fourth. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. One other flyer. I mentioned this briefly about the 375th anniversary. Um, as I see the, the time here, it starts at 930 um, down at Cole Parkway, and it goes until about, it looks like about 1230. No, that can't be. Um, about about 12. Um, and there's a um, uh, General George Casey is the, uh, the keynote speaker, or, and, and uh, Captain Bob Whitehouse are the two speakers there. So um, uh, come on down and enjoy the uh, festivities. Okay, back to business. Number six is uh, discussions of transfers. Mary, are you uh, Mary and Trish? this memo a um, month ago, so I just <laughs> um, Each year um, we have a variety of account shortfalls for June 30th that we need to satisfy, but happily we also have account surpluses. Mary and I attended the advisory committee meeting on June 2nd, which all of these you see before you were unanimously approved. It's a two-step process. They approve and you approve as well. Um, <coughs> I provided you a pretty detailed memo on um, where the transfers are coming from, a couple of points of note. Um, first of all, our financial position continues, I think, to strengthen. I anticipate we'll have as much free cash as we did last year, probably more. Um, so even after these transfers are affected, I think that's due uh, for a variety of reasons, the new budgeting and accommodations <coughs> for the staff for um, really um, being frugal and getting the best price at the best co um, best service. Um, the reserve fund, which we have about 84000 in this year, will also have a surplus for the second year in a row. Traditionally, you spent that down to zero. We're actually following the statutory purpose of the reserve fund right now, which means we only use it for emergency or unforeseen items that um, actually take place during the year that we did not anticipate. The other thing is, um, which isn't in the memo, but um, I explained to advisory and what I'm endeavoring to do since coming on board, is the transfers that we do to satisfy the town side of the budget um, don't come out of the fixed cost shares of the formula. So let's say, for instance, the Council on Aging budget 
had a deficit and there was leftover money in health insurance. That's a fixed cost. I'm not transferring health insurance money to satisfy a town site operating deficit. In the case of workers' compensation or other things, that's a shared cost. If there's shortfalls there, we're doing that. So I'm endeavoring to do that as much as we can so that, um, you know, we're not required to do it. It's all the same pot of money. But I think that that's an equity and fairness thing that I've tried to employ. Um, it's more money traditionally probably than we've seen in past years. Um, some of that is due to um, some good news relative to the anticipated, um, hopefully, uh, settlement of the police contract. There's some ongoing litigation that we did not foresee that has gone on, and um, that's the biggest one. And I do want to take advantage of the fact that um, we do have a surplus in health insurance. It was a little less than we budgeted, but as you know, we have a significant, in my mind, running shortfall, I think, for the workers' comp self-insured fund. So I'm transferring a big chunk of money into that, which again is a fixed cost. So rather than go itemize item by item, Mary on the last page has shown you the account numbers, where the money's coming from, where it's going to, and the reason why. And again, um, in terms of budgetary control, this is pretty good in terms of our departments needing additional help at the end of the year, because most of them, there's actually only um, one that was really, I think, could have been a little more preventable and it's only for 2900 So on a $68 million budget, I think, you know, all in all, it's pretty good. Very good. And I think the key point that you made there was none of the items are free cash that we're funding these from. So all of these departments that were over a little bit are coming from another department that was under a little bit. Yep. Um, unlike the school has a, has a single line item where they can transfer funds to departments at, at their leisure, whereas the town has to actually name the department and move it to a certain department. So um, so all of this stuff is not really a new expense. It's being covered by a shortfall somewhere else. doing that with the contract settlements, too. As you know, there's no money that was in the budget for non-settled union contracts. And this is doing interdepartmental transfers and not using free cash for the anticipated police contract when we settled. Okay. Any comments or questions? So how do we have to do the motion? Do we have to do we have to say the departments? No, you can just say as per test, I think. That's what we did as advisory. Sure. Move the board of select and vote to approve fiscal year eleven transfers as recommended by the town administrator and town accountant. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Good job. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, on the agenda number seven, uh, Senator Headland was going to come and, and talk to us about the state budget, but he uh, had a, a, a commitment come up, so he couldn't make it. So I'm sure he'll be on the agenda in an upcoming meeting. Are you sure? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's the sure second time. On, he said he's sure he'll be on the agenda. <laughs> well, uh, you're right. He will be on the agenda. <laughs> we'll be on the agenda. Okay, so that'll move us um, on to number eight, which is a, uh, an acceptance of a gift. Um, and I am on the, the board of directors of Little League, so I will, uh, I'll talk about this, I guess, and, and then recuse myself. Um, Little League is, uh, is working with a couple of other foundations, one of them being the Reedy Foundation, Paul sitting in front of us here, the Course Foundation, and the uh, Coin family to put a new, um, beautiful new scoreboard over at the high school on the baseball field. And uh, the scoreboard that we have there is in very poor condition. It's been there for a long time, and uh, and we're looking to replace it because our baseball team's been doing great, and we want to get tournament play here, and uh, it makes the field look great, and it's it's needed. Um, so this is going to be a 20-foot wide scoreboard with nine innings and all electronic and and remote access and all this sort of stuff. Um, and uh, like I said, the fundraising was was primarily led by uh, Jim Trevina. Um, who is the assistant coach on the baseball team and coaches the JV team and has been involved with Little League for years. And he's gone out to some of the uh, organizations in town. Um, like I said, the Course Foundation, the uh, high school baseball boosters, Shore, not Course, I misspoke last time, the Reedy Foundation, and, uh, and the Coin family. And uh, we've raised the $17,000 that are necessary to put, um, to put the school board in. 
Um, the one uh, thing that we need the town to do is possibly dig a hole so that the people can come in and put the foundation in there. But other than that, um, the gift of the scoreboard will be for the town. What's happening to the old one? Anybody know? Can we use it in another field at all? Or I don't think it's. I, I don't think it could be used this year, so I don't think it's in usable condition. I think you'd have to put some money in to repair it that people deem was not worthwhile. Gotcha. Now, can we can we uh, have a hole dug to be able to accomplish that for the DPW at all? Or sure. Yeah. When I didn't think it was going to be a problem. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Anybody else? Any questions from the audience? Mr. Reedy, do you want to say anything? No? I want to thank you. It's uh, 20 feet wide. It's not green, though. So it's not the monster. Uh, seeing no questions, um, entertain a motion. Will the board clerk and vote to accept on the town's behalf the kind gift of a school board for the high school baseball field? This donation was made by the Situate Little League. Sure. Situate High Baseball Boosters, the Reedy Foundation, and the family of Nancy Coyne, in memory of her parents. Second. Moved by Mr. Harris, seconded by Mr. Murray. Further discussion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And a, a thank you, and a, I, Kim, could we be able to send maybe a letter of I thank you that. to uh, all four associations? Yes. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Vignani recused himself. Back to Mr. Vignani. Thank you, Mr. Vignani. Um, number nine. We're going to uh, discuss about adopting um, the Situate Hazard Mitigation Plan. Ms. Harbottle. Okay, Laura. Okay. Um, the Hazard Mitigation Plan is something that's required for Situate to get money from certain FEMA programs, um, specifically the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. And in Situate, this program has been used for some of the elevation grants. There were about $120,000 worth of grants over the past couple of years, and there are about another 110000 that are waiting for adoption of this plan to go forward. It was also used for some drainage improvements that were done, the ones between Jericho Road and Turner Road that were done a couple of years ago. Um, MAPC actually prepared the plan, working with some town department heads, and um, those included the fire chief, the conservation agent, the build com building commissioner, and myself. Um, the plan looked at what areas historically have had the most flooding and where the town's critical infrastructure is, which is roads, seawalls, utilities, um, housing for the elderly, um, all those types of things and what can we do reasonably to protect it and they came up with um, some praise for things that we're already doing uh, like the CRS program and some of the zoning that we have that's very protective of coastal areas and they also encouraged us to continue doing things like maintaining the seawalls, repairing the seawalls, cleaning our drainage system in areas near the water um, elevating the flood prone properties and purchasing properties that might be really vulnerable to flooding if there are funds available. So, um, that be through f that would be through FEMA though, right? Uh, to yeah. be able to do it. Yeah. So I don't know if you have any questions about it or uh, any questions? necessary. To, yeah, necessary to receive funding in the case we do get a disaster a little worse than December. Correct? Or equal to, yeah. Great. It seems like, uh, how long have you been working on this? This has been? Well, MAPC is the one working on it. They've been working on it for about a year. Great. I didn't know, uh, I see Bill in the back. Bill, do you have any comments on it or? No. Nope. Support? 100%. Motion. Great. Do you have a motion? Move the board. Go ahead, John. Move the board of selectmen vote to adopt and execute the 2011 Situate Hazard Mitigation Plan. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank well, you, Laura. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Bill. Good work on that Moving on to number 10. This is uh, the discussion of an entertainment license for the uh, Inn at Situate Harbor. 
Is anyone here from the inn? Kim, did you know if anyone was planning on coming in? Tell you what, why don't we move on to the next item and see if uh, we'll give them a little bit more time to come in. Would you like me to make a phone call? I mean, I did, I did contact them by email, but. Um, I'll wait a no, I don't, you want to make a phone call? No, we can no. wait. I'm sure. Just wait. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've done all your effort. We'll give them the uh, benefit of the doubt. We've gone pretty quickly. Maybe they didn't know it started at 6 30. Um, so we'll go to some of the other items and then come back to that. Okay. So um, moving on to number 11, uh, vote uh, intent to award a contract, Renewable Energy Committee. Uh, Al Banger and Paul Reedy. And Kathy Loftus. And Kathy. And Bill Lumbucker. And Bill. My vote. I'm gonna take the second row, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. After this. Um, we're here. Um, I'm here as the DPW. Paul's here with the Energy Renewable Energy Committee, um, and we have uh, completed uh, work to identify an energy service company that could work with the town to uh, take advantage of a state law that enables us to hire a qualified energy service firm to come in and develop an energy improvement project in town whereby at the end they will guarantee the amount of money that we will save and will guarantee the uh, cost of, do it, of performing the project. And they therefore guarantee the rate of return that the town will receive. Uh, this is a program that has been in place in the state, I would say, f you know, seven to eight years. Uh, Tricia had extensive experience with it in Springfield. Uh, there are numerous other towns around us. I would say virtually every town uh, is at some s taking some look at the, the concept of this ESCO or energy service company. I know Marshfield, Dedham, Quincy, Belmont, Springfield as I mentioned, Newton, um, have all got programs underway. The uh, we, this is a, a very regulated program. Uh, the DOER is responsible for establishing the methods by which the town can go solicit for firms uh, who meet the qualifications as energy service companies. Uh, they regulate uh, how we go after uh, the firms in terms of requesting their proposals, uh, what we do in terms of interviewing, uh, what, what uh, data they must provide us with, what uh, various certifications they must have achieved in order to even be considered for uh, entering into one of these contracts. The, uh, we issued a request for proposals back in early January and then the Energy Committee, here's also Bruce Meacham, um, met every Monday night, every Tuesday night for about three months uh, interviewing firms and deciding what to do about this. Uh, the first few meetings were at uh, looking at the proposals and, and going from the, let's see, was it nine proposals we received? So. Yeah, Two, eight, narrowing it down to picking the, the, the three that we would like to do extensive interviews with, then doing those interviews, we gave them a project to perform also, um, and then looked at the results of the project, results of the interview, results of uh, their references throughout other communities they've worked with, and we're here to, to make a recommendation tonight. Now, the steps in this process are select a firm to do f phase one, and that's all we're talking about today, which is the investment grade energy audit. The investment grade energy audit is uh, performed by the firm where they look at all of our town facilities, sewer plant, schools, fire stations, town hall, uh, and determine what are the energy improvements that uh, pro potential projects could, could be made. And they will probably present us with a list of, say, 300 projects, and, be and then make recommendations of which ones will have a positive rate of return for the town if we were to proceed. And that's all we're asking for today is to select the firm who would do the investment grade audit. 
there will be no cost to us to do the audit if we go to the next phase, which is then execute <coughs> on the project with the same firm. Okay? Go with me? Yep. Okay, great. Um, after narrowing it down to three firms, the committee unanimously decided that we should uh, move forward with a firm by the name of Amoresco, located in Framingham. Amoresco uh, has been in the energy service business uh, for more than a decade <coughs> and uh, has done uh, numerous towns around. For instance, they were, just, they were just awarded the Merrimack Valley Planning Council went out and selected them for all the towns that are in the Merrimack Valley. So they're a well thought of firm. Uh, we think highly of them. And I think Paul, you might want to add to that. Yeah, I, I, you know, thanks to the committee and Al. Al had a great system, um, you know, charting each one of the nine. Uh, and as he, as he alluded to, we, we met a, a number of times throughout January, February. And through the charting mechanism, we took every one of their proposals and just tried to break it down in terms of how comprehensive they were, our experience, et cetera, and a number of guidelines that we thought were uh, helpful in, in picking you know the best fit um, from there as Al also said we narrowed it to three um, we actually had a few of them come in a couple of times mm -hmm. uh, because it was difficult as you got through the process you really started picking up different pieces that you might not have missed at the, at the forefront um, and then finally we were all in, in the group uh, we submitted you know a blind uh, vote of who we had the most confidence in and it was unanimous which was great um, we also, did a, we did also did have a runner-up that we thought if for some reason, uh, the way we had phrased our uh, motion, if for some reason uh, Amoresco couldn't do it, uh, then we had a backup so that we don't have to replicate the process again. Um, you know, again, the committee was great. We have a lot of engineers. You know, I want to thank everybody there. Uh, it was a lot of time, and, and uh, I think it's going to be great. I think one of the things that kept, I kept discussing after sitting where you folks are was the, the, the capital plan and how difficult it is for people in the capital plan as well as the Board of Selectmen when you can't do the capital outlay because there is no capital money. Um, this will be very helpful, I think, through grants, uh, through the efficiency standards that they're trying to est establish. And again, it may not be a, a net zero cost to the town, but I think there are a lot of costs that we already have, whether we like them or not. And uh, this can accelerate the process and you know, hopefully, you know, Maybe we get some type of reimbursement where you're paying 50 cents on the dollar versus 100 cents on the dollar as we move forward. Um, so uh, I'm glad we were at where we're at now, <laughs> and not where we were when we got nine nine uh, folders in January. But uh, again, I wanted to thank everybody in the committee. It was a lot of time, and thank Al for uh, for for the way he kind of puts it all together. The um, the proposals, the, the the charts, the way we had gone through everything it was it was very comprehensive and. Uh, think we uh, did cross our T's and dot our I's and if, if there's uh, backup material that's needed we have all everything there so any questions uh, just um, I, I, I thought it was unusual but I'm saying it in a positive way that you came up with a unanimous decision after going through that process and uh, on top of that it's it's invaluable the work that the committee's doing uh, the cost savings to this town going forward. You, you mentioned maybe it, that's a net zero, but I mean, if we look down five years, six years, actually it's going to be backloaded. All those costs are going to come back. It's going to save departments money because we have uh, presumably ener uh, more efficient buildings and the, 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 the sources of, of trying to generate, you know, whether it's heating or air conditioning, you're going to get it back. So uh, it's invaluable, the money that we're saving, or that you folks are able to help the town save. Well, well I think the other thing that's going to be great when you look at these uh, what they do is the audit is they'll they'll tell you you know like a boiler or something that was definitely needed at you know say one of the schools for years uh, th they'll be able to break down exactly for you when you break even is and mm. it's, it was interesting to us as a committee to find out you know in 12 years you you, you break even but there may be th some things in the proposals that take 40 years to recoup and essentially you just go to them and say you know either we don't want to do that or we're going to co-mingle it with other things to make it blend together to get us to where we mm. want to be but again, I think it would facilitate that end of not taking the A's, B's, and C's of capital plan and going back right. year after year after year and hitting right. one or two of them when you know you need to hit 10 to 15 of them, hopefully, right. and, and go from there. So uh, it's not over. I think this is just the beginning. And a number of the uh, discussions we had with the final companies uh, was the fact that one would have to go back to the Board of Selectmen, two would go to the town administrator, and there would have to be an inner working between uh, capital planning, town administrator, Board of Selectmen to find out, you know, when the added audit does come back where the priorities lie and how you're going to approach the uh, uh, 
approach the whole process uh, from the get-go. One thing Al said, and I just want to make sure it was clear, because I, I think I was clear on it. Because of the audit by this uh, company, this company is the one that ultimately, if we go forward with their recommendations, we're going to be using them. It only makes sense. That's the way it has yes, to be. Yes, that's correct. Right. Um, if, we, if they did the audit and we decided, ah, we don't want to go forward, then we will owe them the money for right. the audit. And that money was appropriated at the fall town meeting. Right. And, and their costs far below what we appropriated. So um, we, we can stop or we can go forward. It would behoove us, I believe, unless we find out that we're not able to work with this firm, it would be, behoove us to go forward with this particular firm. And uh, when I say guarantee, it's not like a, uh, a shallow guarantee, it's a state regulated guarantee. They say if we're going to, if this project will cost this much money, if it exceeds that, then they're financially responsible to pay for the excess cost. Uh, likewise, if it falls, if savings fall short, mm -hmm. then they have to make up the savings differences. So naturally, they hedge their bets. So when we see some projects, we'll say, whoa, that's a big cross, and that's all it's going to save. But of course, what they're trying to do is make sure they're capped. Uh, and generally, what, what I've seen in going, talking to some of the reference firms, uh, reference towns, uh, the savings, the costs are lower and the savings are better than come through in the audit. So we're, we're kind of covered. Much, much like the I&I. &I try to do the most for the biggest or spend the least to get the biggest return that's Some I just want to stuff. say thank you for you know thank you thank you a couple things sure um, first of all I think both Al and the committee are being modest um, this is a tremendous amount of work that we've been working on 18 months I tasked Al with this right after I came in the door I think after having seen how successful it was in Springfield um, but it's, it was a tremendous amount of work from the RFP to the review process. The fact that we got so many bids, I think, is tells, you know, be as well for the town. I just, I, I want to remind you of a few things, though. We do have to go back to town meeting when the audit's done. We have a pretty viable capital plan now, I think, so that'll segue nicely into what Paul was just saying about being able to objectively rate the relative priorities to be able to fund what's needed. But I just want to take a moment to talk about what one of the board's goals has been for the last two years in terms of us really being a leader in the Commonwealth for energy efficiencies in green communities. And a lot of that work is due to the people here. But, you know, solar, wind turbine, green communities, pilot program one of four of the state for solarized Massachusetts, and now this ESCO program. So in terms of utilities, which is a huge part of our budget, and energy efficient but clean, green um, alternatives. Um, I think the community can be really, really proud, and a lot of that's due to the work of these folks and Laura and some other people. So you know, it's not often I think we get to pat ourselves on the back, and we are state-of-the-art in this town in terms of this kind of stuff, and people all over the state are starting to recognize it. So thank you very, very much for your work. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. I. You met on Tuesday nights. Many times we'd have a late meeting and we'd walk out in the hallway <laughs> yeah. and say, what's that noise? And they would still be going strong in the room next door to us. So um, to me, this is easy. When you get you know, a handful of intelligent people together, they put in hours and hours into a project that they're, they, they're passionate about and they all come up with the same answer. You know, who am I to say that, uh, you know, that this, this is wrong, the wrong company to pick? Uh, you know, the project is good, just so people understand there's a $33,000 commitment. Um, you know, if they give us back an audit and we say we're not doing any of it, then th we're going to have to pay them $33,000 for the audit work. I think that would be far-fetched that we wouldn't find one of the 300 projects on there that, we don't, that doesn't have a, an immediate payback. And, um, and I think we actually get, if I remember correctly, months ago that we actually you know, we get the benefit of that. So we, they guarantee returns, they guarantee savings. And if, like Al said, you know, it's hedged. If they don't hit it, then they owe us the, the funds for it. So it's, it's really a win-win situation. And really, as Tricia said, follows our green plan. Um, so many people in town don't understand what, what the town of Situ is doing. They don't even know that there's a solar array going in and that there's a wind turbine going in and that we have all these things going on that are cutting our utility expenses down to, to really, really, really low levels. And Paul, you've headed this up since you were on the board up here and you know, kudos to you for the years and years you put into this. Um, but it's, it's having an immediate huge impact on the town and the town's financial situation. So 
thank you for all this. And like I said, this is easy for me. So, John, although none of you are up for reappointment, consider you are. <laughs> <laughs> consider you're reappointed. Long short of it. <laughs> Motion, please. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract to develop a comprehensive energy improvement project under Mass General Laws, Chapter 25, Section 11, small i, to Amoresco of Framingham, subject to the successful contract negotiations. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Just one quick question, Paul. You mentioned that there was some sort of backup in the motion about a second. <clears throat> yeah, w w our, our mentality was. Uh, when we voted it, we just wanted to make sure that if Amoresco, for some unforeseen reason, which we don't anticipate, can't do it, then we don't have to start from square one. We have kind of. Is that in here, though? No, no, it's just. No, but it's on. Choice. It would only oh, be on okay. in the event that they back again. But gotcha. then again, we it's wouldn't on have to do it another time. They wouldn't have to do it. We did it in our motion all at once to save, so we don't have to do Wonderful. it. Wonderful. So you've got a plan B. Yeah. 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 Great. Not that it's not anticipated, but right. saves them at our meeting. You don't want to come back for another three months? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Chair. I see that uh, Linda Ferguson is here now for agenda item 10. I do as well. Paul. So we will go back to number 10. Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks. Kim, I'm just going to step off. Nice job, Paul. Number 10, we're going to discuss the uh, entertainment license and the change of hours and type of entertainment in the patio area at the Inn at Situate Harbor. Mr. Denny is going to recuse himself. Uh, Linda Ferguson Hi, from Linda. the Inn at Situate Harbor. I'm very sorry. I'm trying to squeeze too many things in at once, and I thought Senator Headland might talk for at least five minutes, but apparently not. So I'm very sorry. No, no. No sweat. <laughs> no sweat, Linda. If we had waited two more minutes, I saw you in the hallway, but... Uh, oh, that's okay. Yes. Um, so I'm here because the last time I was here, um, it was brought to my attention that our, the entertainment license that I thought uh, was till 10 o'clock on the patio was in fact only until 9. Um, and I apologize that we had been running entertainment till 10 o'clock um, up until that meeting and then I stopped it. So, um, but so I wanted to come back and just, you know, make it till 10 o'clock like I thought it was. <laughs> um, you know, we haven't had any complaints. I think everybody around us thought it was till 10 o'clock. Um, we did have one complaint by one neighbor who um, is also a friend of mine who called the hotel directly. The entertainment had gone well past 10 o'clock. This was uh, last summer. And uh, we went down and stopped it immediately. But other than that, we've not had any problems um, with the entertainment going till 10. So I was just hoping to change it from 9 to 10 on the patio. And then I also put in there, um, that um, I would have liked to um, allow the singers to have a microphone when they're out on the patio. Um, almost all of our entertainment is just one singer with one guitar. Um, and when they're on the patio and the cars are going by, you really, they get drowned out. Um, and, um, you know, so I just thought for them. Um, however, out of deference to my neighbors, who I love dearly, um, <laughs> Uh, I don't want to infringe upon them. I have a great deal of respect for them. My sole purpose in asking for the microphone was just because, you know, the singers get drowned out. Um, but, um, um, you know, I can always just have them sing inside, I guess. You know, I just, I thought that with just, it's not like I have a seven piece band out there banging on drums with a bass guitar and stuff like that. So they do get drowned out. And I, um, you know, if you weren't, interested in giving me the microphone um, I, I'd like to maybe give it a shot you know maybe some you know heritage days weekend or some weekend in July see how it goes and see if they uh, are amenable to it I I did explain to them I'm probably the worst person to own a bar I go into the bar and if I can't hear the person next to me I go over and yell at the bartenders to tell them to turn the music down I think that the music is is there to create an ambiance it's not a rock concert and I know in rock concerts you don't talk to the person next to you in the bar, that's what you're there to do. You're there to socialize, you're there to talk to the person next to you, and the music should just be background. Um, so even inside, where I do have the microphone, I do tell my bartenders to turn the music down all the time. Um, and the other thing, too, is out on the patio, before my neighbors are going to complain, I have 29 guest rooms that are going to be calling me if that music is too loud. And, and um, um, so, you know. I don't know what else to say. I just, um, it's truly my, my 
entertainment. I can't afford any more than one person. <laughs> so it's really only one person and a guitar out there. We do have one band that comes. Um, they're local and everybody's local and they're a ton of fun, Larry's Closet. Um, but I can always just have them play inside because uh, there is seven of them. <coughs> Sometimes more, everybody seems to jump up and sing with them. But, um, um, but everybody else is really one person. And so I was just looking for the microphone for the singer's voice so that it didn't get drawn out. So just so I can clarify that, it's not amplified instruments, it's just an amplified voice. The voice, yeah. Because they're all just playing guitars. I mean, I think some of them do plug their guitar in, but I have no problem saying no to them on that. They, you know, if you play one guitar, you play another, right? It doesn't really, right? I'm not really a musician, but I just assume that if you can play an electric guitar, you can play a regular guitar just as easily, right? And I'll just tell them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. Okay. <laughs> I was just we looking more for the voice. We're not going there. <laughs> yes, Mr. Murray. Um, leaving aside the the amplified microphone uh, aspect first, just for the hours, the 10 p.m. Is that unusual? Is that a common hour for other people around? Other uh, establishments? Outdoor, yeah, okay. So the other ones are 10 o'clock, though? But they are indoor. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right, okay. And you've been, you've been um, licensed to nine, but in practice you've been up to 10. Right? But uh, that was my mistake. I'm very sorry. I understand sorry that. No, I just, yes. I just want to make sure that I understand. So, I mean, yes. because since you've been going to 10, we haven't gotten any complaints. Right. And, and it is quiet hours at the end at 10 o'clock. So, yeah. 10 o'clock, everything's, you know, is supposed to be shut down. Even inside, I know I can go till midnight, but we shut it down at 10. Um, and then, you know, they're, they're, everybody's supposed to be quiet. Okay. I mean, sometimes they aren't, and, sure. and um, you know, we go and yell at them, and they get quiet because we tell them that if they're not quiet, they're going to pay for every guest room in the building, and they don't like that. Sure. So <laughs> where, where I'm coming from on this is I'm fine with the 10 o'clock part, this, the second part of the motion, but I do have some questions and, or, you know, concerns about the microphone just because it's outdoors, and no one else has that. No other establishments have that, and... and um, you know, so my preference would be, yeah, keep that on the inside, um, and uh, you know, move move in that direction. Just to be candid with you, I want to support you as much as I can. You guys do a great oh, job. That's fine. I think you're a model for how you work with the neighbors, and uh, you know, we get emails of support, and it's not usual that, you know, someone is trying to do something to the, after it gets dark for a long time, and then we get people saying yes, please allow this. So. I just want to make sure we keep going on that, Linda. Yep, so that's, that's, fine. that's where I'm coming from on this. Yeah, no, I totally agree, and I just want to explain to you why I asked for it. It was. I completely understand so where you're coming from. And I have no problem. Yep. Hey, Sean. I guess <coughs> I didn't realize you had an outdoor entertainment license now till nine o'clock outdoors, and you're the only establishment in the harbor that has this. All right. I guess. A full time. Uh, let me just repeat that. So they have an outdoor entertainment license right now, mm -hmm. till nine o'clock, but it's not amplified. Right. Right. It was till I was playing till ten by accident. By right. That's what I thought I heard. Right. Okay. So the first part I was talking about was, I'm fine with moving that from nine to ten. Uh, ten because I remember last time you said the quiet hours are ten, right. which I like you. I appreciate you know <laughs> when I'm traveling you know, and. So my comment was just on the amplification part. And so, all right, yeah, all right. I just want to make sure I heard that right. Okay, that was, I wasn't quite sure about that earlier. I like the fact that you're very conscientious of your neighbors around you. You know, that, that, that speaks volumes to me. Um, have you spoken to them before coming here tonight about what your plan was? I did speak to uh, some of them today. Okay, some of them, okay. Um, we've been a little crazy at the end and we're doing a lot of work but I did speak to some of them today which is why I, I have no problem not getting the microphone I just wanted to explain to you why I had originally applied for it um, you know they it, they're concerned about the noise I don't blame them um, and, and um, I would be too I mean if I had a bar around the corner from me I would be too and I just hope that you know I think we, we do our best um, to keep that noise down I, I 
you know, we're doing our best, and I, I don't I, think we've had any complaints. No. So I, I know you're doing a good job. You kicked me off the patio at like <laughs> nine o'clock to go inside, and there wasn't any music. You just yeah. had us come and go inside, yes. and which is, which speaks volumes. I mean, our volumes. priority is our guests and our neighbors. I mean, right. we want we want the inn and the dog watch to be something that the town of Situa can be proud of. And if there's neighbors that aren't proud of it, then that doesn't work for anybody. And, and likewise, if the guests aren't happy, that doesn't work either. So. I might just have some more later, but right for right now, I'm all set. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, your, your establishment's in a unique position because it's really in a residential area. You know, you're surrounded by houses that are literally a stone throw away. Yep. Um, of course, they're also right on Front Street that is loud, and it's a little ironic that you need a microphone to drown out traffic <laughs> that, yeah. you know, the neighbors are hearing also. So it's... Yep. it's uh, you know, I, I think the fact that it's microphone voice and not microphone instruments are have a little bit of an impact, but certainly you've been conscientious of the neighbors. I, I, I believe that if the neighbors were rebelling, that as you're kind of saying, you wouldn't proceed with it. So, um, so what I'm going to do before we talk anymore is open up to the floor and see if anyone else has any discussions. We've got a few emails, and uh, let's just vet it out and, and see where it goes. So is there any... Uh, Yes, ma'am. Hi, Mine's Larry, 199 Front Street. They're very good neighbors. I just don't want to hear them. And I would like some clarification on acoustic, which is what their license is, versus amplified. I think that's where some of the issue is. Um, is acoustic, I don't know what acoustic is. Okay. It's plugged into something, and then it's plugged into an amplifier, but then I've seen very large speakers over there, so I think I'm against an outside anything because TK's is the elephant in the room. Um, so if they get amplification and, and later hours on the patio, then we're dead on the corner of Front Street. Um, but a, a huge issue is acoustic and amplified. I don't know that difference, but I think everybody needs to be on the same page because I'm not sure that we are. I, I'm not a musician, and I'll give you my two cents, and then I'll pass it on to you guys. But amplified means you're plugged into an amplifier, into a, a mic. And I, I mean, and that just can from be watching MTV, and they have acoustic concerts, the guy's always singing into a mic, but his guitar or his piano isn't plugged into anything. So I don't know technically whether singing into a mic would be considered amplified or not, but um, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. It's so if you're acoustic your is voice. a type of acoustic is a type of instrument, yeah. and you can amplify an acoustic instrument or not, and you can have a voice that you're singing, and you can have a voice that's singing with a microphone, and that's amplified. So it's really amplified or non-amplified is whether it's going to get louder. And acoustic or not acoustic is almost immaterial because acoustic guitars, when amplified, can get quite loud, and electric guitars, when amplified, can get quite loud as well. So, so it, or, it, it's the it's the type. When you say acoustic or not, that's just the type. I, I suspect you're mostly concerned with the noise level. Right. I really care not what they what they've right. done over there. I just right. don't want to hear it. Have you heard yeah. them yet? Pardon? Have you heard them yet? Yes. Has it been a problem? But That's kind of irrelevant, but... But you're right, but, um, but you know, this is a, a battle on Front Street. Yeah, I mean, we understand we don't want to set a precedent that, that carries on and gets out of control. Yeah, exactly. um, um, so, just so I can get it clear, so at this point, the 9 o'clock acoustic license, you don't have a problem with at all? No. It hasn't been a problem. There's been one time when Linda... Right. mean 9 o'clock non-amplified? Right. Acoustic. Or non-amplified, whatever. No, seriously, I mean, acoustic has nothing to do with amplification or not. You need to say amplified or non-amplified. So well, I think I the know. license says acoustic. That's what I was just looking at. Yeah. yeah. I think that. Yeah. Well, as Tony says, you know, you watch MTV, and, you know, MTV unplugged allegedly. They're playing acoustic instruments and they're all plugged in, so they're actually not unplugged. Okay. So, at this point, it's been fine to this except on that one instance that you're aware of. okay 
Any other comments from? Yes, sir. I can be next to the name of the next to the name. I, uh, I too would not like to see them have the amplification out and uh, carry on until 10 o'clock. And uh, the 10 o'clock time is fine, and they should keep that type of music inside after uh, 9 o'clock. They do what they're doing, it's they good now, we like it that way. And uh, if they're going to have to play above the traffic, well, how loud is that going to be, Mr. Schoen? You ask the question. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. How loud would that be? Uh, um, I guess it depends on the instrument and the amplification, right? I'd like to see it at 10 o'clock at 5 or so. Uh, Any other? From the, yes, ma'am. Any other comments? Yes, sir. Ed Leary, 199 Front Street. I was just, uh, I just find it curious that there's only one venue in town that's allowed outdoor entertainment. What is the special situation? I don't think anybody else has asked. <coughs> right. <coughs> Nobody else has asked. asked. <coughs> what, I'm sorry, what was the word, you curious? I'm, I'm just curious why, why this is a special circumstance. Well, it's not they, were they are, were, when they are allowed to have outside um, entertainment, and I do believe other establishments have asked. I, I don't recall, yeah. I mean, I don't have the longevity that Mr. Harris has, but I don't recall anybody else really asking for a continual license like this. I think some establishment has for special events or for short periods of time, but as part of a a committed establishment, as Ms. Ferguson's entity is, setting up shop where they clearly have an indoor part and an outdoor part continually. I, I don't think I there are any the, others. No, I, I don't think they've asked to answer your question. Yeah, and, so it's not like uh, we're doing anything they, special here. It's well, just that they're the ones that asked. I, re I, re I, may, I may add, um, I'd like to quote uh, Mr. Morton at the hearing. He said, this is a very, I think he used the word slippery slope. Once you open the possibility by allowing it one establishment, then we have justification in every other establishment to ask for the same privileges. And this has been a, a we have had a history of issues with a particular establishment on Front Street who have requested outdoor entertainment in the past, and it's been denied them. And we are feeling a little bit pressure here that this may be the beginning of that slippery slope that has been going yeah, I think. I mean, I think that's what we've talked about the whole time, that we're, we're aware of the fact that we don't want to set a precedent that's going to, you know, expand into something um, larger than we want it to be. But, um, but I don't think this is a special situation. Somebody applied for an outdoor license to, to play acoustical music or non-amplified music, and, I mean, it's not uncommon. It is, it is in situate, but it's not uncommon in, in the state. Um, Sean? I would look at each case individually. Absolutely. This is unique in that, you know, she said it, and you, we all know it. There are 29 rooms and 29 people that could complain just as fast as any one of the neighbors, and she'll have to deal with that or she'll have empty rooms. The other thing I wanted to mention was that if this does get granted and the, we can find a somewhat of a common ground here, could we grant it for a month or something like that? We can always rescind it. We can pull it back. I, I imagine. I didn't realize up till just till I read this again that that they had an outdoor entertainment license till nine o'clock. I was unaware I mean, of that. I mean, their patio is only going to fit so many people. TK O'Malley's, we could probably a hundred of us could fit on that patio, it's, and it's a lot different. They don't have rooms right up above that they have to be concerned with. She does, and and I, I you know. I mean, understand what I mean, saying. we do, I don't know if you've ever been in, I, if you do come in, we do try and 
cater to a different crowd. It's a crowd to go in and sit and relax and um, enjoy a drink or whatever. I, I'm not shooting for the TK's crowd. Wait, I, I want to, can, can I interrupt here? something here? One, Mr. 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 Yeah. I don't want to mention other establishments here by name because okay. TK O'Malley's in particular, there I am mentioning it by name, but they're a fine establishment they in this are, town there, and I'm they serve safe. this town well. And I just, I'm very uncomfortable with, with <laughs> setting up, you know, from people in the audience to be candid setting up elephants in the room or issues like that because that's not this applicant's issue. That's the town's issue. And as Mr. Harris said, we're going to be dealing with this on a case-by-case -case basis. If Ms. Ferguson's establishment gets out of hand, which I would be shocked to tears if they do, but if they do, we'll address it. And Mr. Harris said, you know, we can perhaps rescind a license if it gets to be a problem. And then if this is setting a precedent and another group comes in, we deal with that all the time. We have new restaurants coming in all the time. We have new people wanting to, you know, start a marina or something like that. We, we deal with that, and we deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis. And, you know, if another institution says, well, hey, these guys have it, and they're doing a good job with it, and we want to offer some competition and try and take some of their business, this board will decide that on a case-by-case -case basis. And if that entity messes up, we'll come down on them just like we would there. So I'm sensitive to your points. It's a, and I think the board is. It's a residential neighborhood. We've heard from you. We really support exactly everything you're saying, and it sounds like they are too. But I really don't want to go down the road of saying this is really about something else. It's not about something else. We need to be aware of something else. But this is just about this application, and that's what we really want to address. So I didn't mean to interrupt, but people were starting to talk, in my opinion, too much about other institutions and so on. So I'll, whoever was speaking before. And I um, apologize for interrupting. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, they looked at, at the situation and they saw that it was in a residential area and they weren't supportive of um, of, acoust of uh, amplified music in the area. Um, and they think the current situation is reasonable. So, uh, neighbors, I'll ask you, um, I, I hear that you don't like the amplified music. I hear you don't have a problem with the 10 o'clock acoustical music. Am I hearing you correctly? Not amplified. <laughs> Not amplified. Is that, is that correct? Okay. Um, no, that it's 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 purely just <laughs> give me a call. No, it's uh, it's it's truly just amplify. I mean, I would suggest, and we'd need to change the wording on the license, but I would suggest that it just be amplified or not amplified. And my personal preference would be that we say non-amplified till ten. Is that so it's not it's not, it, regardless of what it is. It could be someone banging on a. In a microphone, you're not calling what an instrument is. It's just the amplification is the issue. So it'd be nothing that's plugged in. Right. Right. So they think that's what you either a microphone or an instrument or anything that includes a microphone. Right. right. So that is for both indoor and outdoor. No indoor. This is just the outdoor. No, we're only well, talking. I'm reading the license to try and see what the the indoors. Description of music to be uh, conducted, acoustic guitar music, singers for events. But to, uh, Mr. Chair, right yep. above it, description of premises, in its situate harbor patio pub area. But then underneath it, pa uh, pub area indoors. Where does it say that? Right below the, to be conducted on weekdays, on the hours, pub indoors, Monday through Wednesday. Oh. So is this, which one of the licenses is this that we're looking at? It's the only one, right? But there's not an indoor license and an outdoor license. It's, all it's one. one license for. One, oh no, it's one license. Right. Okay. So, it appears that. So this would just be for the, oh. on the to be conducted paragraph, for the patio area, where it says Monday to Wednesday four to nine. If what we're talking about would happen, that would say, Monday to Wednesday four to ten, and Thursday through Sunday from twelve, to ten, and above it would say, instead of acoustic guitar music, it would say non-amplified music. Right. Correct. It actually, as you can see from the way this license appears, yeah. it wasn't specified um, amplified or non-amplified inside. It's 
says acoustic for the whole thing. Mm. Correct. <laughs> okay. So here's what we'll do. Let's let's change the wording, or let's let's discuss changing the wording for the patio to be non-amplified music till 10 o'clock at night. Okay. Let's make a motion. You can't. You, you want one of those? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Oh yeah. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we're just going to go to the patio area and change the hours to 10 on the two time periods, the closing time period, and it'll say non-amplified music. And if if they hear or see amplified music, they should go right to the desk there and get in touch with you, and you'll put an end. Oh yeah. I'll be down there faster than. Is everyone content with that? Good. Great. Yeah, thank, you. thank you for coming in. Thank you. So Kim will get the license to you Can next week or something. Someone tell Mr. Danahy to come in, please. So we'll move to number uh, 12. We'll give John a minute to get back here, but Al and uh, Kevin will be here for the water rates. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, in 1902, water pipes were laid throughout Situate. Um, and uh, are these props I back here? I, huh? Are these props back here? Yeah, I set no. some props up. Yeah, we have some props. Okay. Um, the water pipes were laid in 1902 <coughs> when the uh, water company was formed. Uh, they they extended to almost all households in Situate. Of course, the town has grown, and water pipes were added since 1902. As uh, obviously more recently, as even as subdivisions are built. Uh, but we've been plagued with uh, pressure and flow issues throughout Situate. The fire department knows about it. The, um, and also, the source of our brown water is the age of our water pipes. Not that one. Um, the bad one. Several years ago, the town adopted a multi-year plan to replace these pipes and the hydrants throughout the town. Uh, pipes are about a 40-year item, so investments we're making in this are in uh, things that are really keepers. So as we go forward, we're making sure that we're making replacements in a way that will be something that we'll be happy to have for the next 40 years. And let me turn it over to Kevin to talk not about all 108 miles of our pipe, but talk about what have we been doing with the money that's been invested in infrastructure thus far, and where is this thing going? And then I want to talk to you about what we want to do with rates this year. Okay, thank okay. you. Can we just one second, there were just some props put up here. If you can just explain what they are for one second, or is that part of the? No, that not a problem. Yeah. The Zach, can you get those? You have them both, just for the people. On the left hand side is the water main on Hollett Street that we just replaced, um, and that's just a coupon in the existing pipe of what we cut out. Um, the pipe to the right is the new pipe of enough. what we replaced, so <laughs> it shows the additional volume of water that we are able to supply throughout the area, and um, that water goes to fire protection. It's a ductile pipe. It's coated in a black um, asphalt type just to protect the pipe. It's got cement lining on the inside, and it's coated on top of that. Um, and, and that's, you know, pretty decent pipe. Kevin, so Kevin, Kevin what, is, what is that brown stuff on the inside of the other pipe? Manganese oxide. That brown stuff on the inside of the pipe, should you ask, is... We have no props to drink, though, this mm -hmm. time. Yeah. We have no cup to drink. <laughs> we can chew on it. If you remember, if you remember last year, sure we drank a cup. Yeah. That, uh, that, that actually is naturally occurring iron that's in situate and almost all water. That, that is dissolved iron that as, as the rain falls and goes through the rocks, it picks up iron in the rocks. There's irony, iron laden water uh, in our uh, underground. It's, it's also in Poland Springs, by the way. Um, and when the Iron, which is dissolved, is exposed to oxygen, then it oxidizes and forms little rust particles. So those are little rust particles that came from within the water and have settled into that pipe. And over years and years, they settled and formed a cakiness to it. Now, as water rushes through that pipe, say if a fire hydrant is opened or if a water main breaks, or if uh, someone turns on a thousand sprinkler heads at, at the other end of the line and water rushes through there, it stirs up all of that iron oxide and creates the brown water. 
Now we've been able to, because of Jim Bar DeBarros' leadership, uh, starting last spring, last fall, and this spring through aggressive flushing, we've been able to cut down the number of incidents of brown water. But nonetheless, when a, a, a big occurrence such as a fire hydrant is opened or a, a, one of those old line breaks, we get lots of brown water throughout town. Question. So the old pipe has all that manganese. Manganese, manganese and iron oxide. And oxide okay. That's going to happen in the bigger pipe at some point over time, will it not? Totally possible, sure. It, the, the same uh, element will be in our water, but it can be flushed. Right now, if you look at those old pipes, it's like, you know, you think about trying to flush that out of there. It's like an artery. It's very difficult. Yeah. Whereas in this, Logged. by annual flushing, any sediment is readily flushed out. Mr. Harris. Life ex expectancy out of the ductile? Useful life, yeah. Um, they say 100 years. I mean, it, it's it's pretty significant. Um, and if you look at that pipe, that's well, that pipe is, is cast ones. iron. I think, um, I don't know, it was put in 1902, 1904, mm -hmm. around that area. So, so uh, the pipes will last. Um, just from a depreciation standpoint, there's a 40-year depreciation on that one pipe. So if you made an investment, bought a pipe, you could depreciate it over 40 years. So the finance industry expects that it's good for more than 40 years. So um, this isn't to say that we won't be replacing pipe that pipe at some point, uh, three, two or three generations people from now. Not our lifetime. Um, but we, we're getting a good return on our money out of this old pipe here. Um, and as you see, when we're putting in the new pipe, we're putting in a pipe that uh, is less rust prone as the old pipe is bigger to meet today's needs for firefighting. And at the same time, we are doing that wherever we're paving streets and we're, we're, we're going after replacing the pipes at the same time that we're paving the streets so we don't have to come back and do the pipes later. So I, I thought Kevin might point out uh, what we've done, where we are thus far in town. We've got a chart over here in this wall, another, another uh, handy. We've got a chart where we, where we sketched out some of the areas. We've done, uh, we've Cap cleaned in line can I, country way. Can I interject? Zach, can you get that on the wall? Just so people can see it. Uh, it's up on the thing there. Can you get it over there? Okay. Thanks, Kevin. We've, uh, we've done cleaning and lining on Country Way, Beaver Dam, First Parish. We've replaced the lines on Hollett Street, Tilden Road, and Stockbridge. Um, we have a couple areas in the future that we plan on getting. Why we're ripping up the roads from Musquashka Pond. We're going to do all the water lines that we can over there. We'd like to do everything. Um, we don't have enough funds to do everything, like Eli Road and some of these small roads are, are very small, like say two or four inch galvanized lines that are feeding them that are we eventually want to get. Um, but we mm. plan on doing um, everything on Hatherley and the areas on Gannett Road, which Gannett Road currently has two water lines on it that are, I think the youngest one, 60 plus. So um, we're looking to eliminate that and replace that with new lines and the reason why we're doing that is because then we pave the roads over it and we don't have to go back in there two lines in other words two parallel lines or just There's two parallel lines on each side yes um, some houses are on one pipe and some houses are on the other no kidding yeah it's just the way it was done so they um, put in a second pipe and didn't change the old houses over they just added new houses to the old one. waste so and, and this kind of shows the area of what we're going to try and get in the future um, we need to go around the lighthouse for his Tilden Road, Beaver Dam Road, Country Way, Tallinn Street. Um, in the future, we want to get up First Parish to the other side of 3A. That's an older pipe and could be updated because here's where our water source is. The stand pipe is actually right here. Um, Stockbridge Road was replaced. We want to do hand vinyl at some point. We want to go around the lighthouse. That's a consistent breaker um, in that general area. And after we get the main, which is kind of like the main flow of how it runs through the town. We'll start picking off some of the neighborhoods and start maybe pick a couple of streets each um, each year and start replacing those piece by piece. Kevin, what's the, the time period on, on the project you just said? Is that a one Four year, hours. two year? Four? You mean doing the work that we're doing? No, no, just the few streets that you just mentioned. You said we want to, you wanted to go up by the lighthouse, you wanted to get over by. All the years. I mean, it's, so it's. It, Um, 
it's a slow process because you can't. If you said his, you know, twenty million dollars, just go fix everything in town. Nobody'd be able to move anywhere. We'd have excavators everywhere, and the system would be disrupted. We'd have to shut everybody down from water. So it's it's a piecemeal process. Yep, so that's yep. a five year, three, four, five year. We're, we're looking. We look to spend about a million and a half a year. That's about all we can chew off and keep the town functioning. Um, and how long will it last? I think we'll be continually doing it. Uh, it's just something that has to go on forever. It's a continual, just like in any automobile, you have to continue invest in it uh, to keep it running. We don't have the luxury of throwing it away and getting a brand new automobile. We're going to have to. We're going to keep this thing maintained forever. Um, as Kevin pointed out, the idea is to get the main flows from where the water is, which is in the water tanks on, on, on Man, Lot, and Maple, down to where people are, which is generally in this, that area uh, along the coast. The idea being that we want to make sure we have adequate fire flow down there, because these old junky pipes right here don't really well support a fire truck in today's technology with what it's able to pump and what the water is that they could use to put out a fire, that six inch line is, uh, has a, a difficult time doing it. So it tends to stir up the whole system when we use a fire line right now. One second, uh, uh, Sean, did you have a question? I, <coughs> when you're doing the project at Musquashkid, if you come across an area that's not looped, I, you know, and that's not just as simple as laying down a new line. No, we, we took that into consideration. Going good. by the condominium on Musquashkid Ave, we're going to loop that uh, through. There must be some. I don't know of any, but there m must be some because probably 60 years ago this process, you know, it there wasn't There are some, but like done. at the end of Surfside Road, there's nothing we can really do unless can we do. cross the pond. That's right. And right. Um, we didn't have the funds this year to Ooh. do Surfside Road, say, but... Um, you know, we're hoping with, with additional funding, if we find the money, we'd be able to continue and do the additional work before we pave the roadways. Good. Now, the good news is the, you have a very responsible water department. Uh, they've uh, more than beat their budget. Uh, the revenues were good last year, so we're, we will be coming back at the capital meeting in the fall to talk about uh, supplemental monies to enable us to uh, complete the work in Musquashkit. So when we're, when we're done paving in Musquashkit, everything underground is uh, tidy bowl clean and fresh and ready to last another hundred years. What we're here tonight to d discuss is the uh, program was started uh, five years ago, I believe, uh, with the idea that with a 5% rate increase, that would, that would provide some supplemental capital funding for the, um, this kind of infrastructure investment. And we're asking to do that again this year. A 5% rate increase would raise the average uh, household's uh, cost per year to eight by eighteen dollars per year, um, raise us from three hundred sixty-eight dollars per year for that family to three hundred eighty-six dollars per year, eighteen dollar year increase. Now, hate to crow, but of our eleven sister communities, which ranges um, in the north to Weymouth and in the south to Plymouth, uh, of coastal communities and abutting communities, um, we are the we are the second next to bottom in terms of water <coughs> cost per family. Um, we are one-fourth the cost of an immediate neighbor. Uh, we are one-third the cost of two other immediate neighbors. I'll, I'll tell you what, can you just read them mm. so yeah, people okay. get the sense? Right, Cohasset, well, this is right. the average, or I'll do it. Well, it's okay. the average cost of the of, of, uh, annual cost of an average family, and this is their water bill. I assume you did it on the their rate times the 90,000 gallons? Yes, per year? actually, that is it's a survey done by an engineering firm who annually surveys all companies, right. uh, I mean, all towns. Um, and these, this is the survey of their rates uh, prior to our increase even. So it's like a year-old rate for them, but it's kind of okay. cool. Go ahead. So yeah. here's, here's the average uh, family's cost for water. In Cohasset, and this is per tie-in bond survey in 2010, Cohasset, $1,656. Hingham, $919. Hull, $919. Weymouth, $609. Norwell, $570. Duxbury, $459. Rockland, $426. Pembroke, $405. Marshfield, $395. Situate, $368 if we don't vote this increase. And then Plymouth is the number 11 at $218 a year. So that begs the question, 
how could Cohasset be so much more expensive than us? Do they not have a reservoir, or do they do they do all their infrastructure over? Uh, Cohasset has uh, significantly invested in pipes. Um, they, they, I believe, um, completely uh, replaced their piping system recently. So most of these higher ones are, have just put a lot. I mean, frankly, before this increase, we didn't put any money at all, as evident by that that pipe over there, into yeah. the infrastructure of the town. Right. So some of ours is catch up. Um, so I, I think uh, they they've got that higher cost. They've got a uh, their some of their other investments are are very state of the art. Uh, we've tended to not have state-of-the-art equipment. We've tried to keep things running in a, re in a reasonable way. Uh, one or two of them have private water companies. Hingham and Hull have a private water company supplying them. So that tends to cost a little <coughs> more. Um, so our municipal water uh, produced by situate um, employees, residents, uh, they're all residents basically, uh, is, is, uh, keeps our costs low. And you're asking for a 5% a one-year? I, I know I, I wasn't on the board then, but there was a five-year. And we said we, we said five years ago that we would like to have a plan. Our intent, which we would confirm each year or decide each year, which is what we're doing here for this year. But our intent is for five percent raises because we looked at this list back then, and we were still number ten then. In fact, I just want to point out to that list: if we go up this eighteen dollars for the average house household. It doesn't even change our ranking. We're still number 10 out of 11. It's not like we're going to vault over number 9 and only be number 9 out of 11. We're still going to be the 10th cheapest water around. So we've just been doing it 5% a year for the last five years, and at least my intent, you know, when you're talking about all this sort of thing here, this is a very tangible, successful program, in my opinion, where the rates are coming in and the money is going out, and instead of this, we're getting this, and we're still relatively inexpensive. So I think this is a very successful endeavor. And in addition to supporting this today, you know, my feeling was let's just keep going on this as long as it's logistically able and financially makes sense as it is here. Mr. Harris? Rick, Rick is correct. We've been doing something for at least five years that I can recall, but the method was a little different, if I'm not mistaken. We were lining the pipes with concrete, weren't we? Kramer and Kramer well, we, from we New Jersey. We lined Country Way and we lined okay. David Dam also. But uh, now you agree, I think just replace them rather well, than no, what we do is, well, we're debating that a little it bit. It depends on the size of the pipe, yeah. too, okay. because that happened to have a 10-inch pipe, and we could we could clean and line it. But something like a 6-inch pipe, we're not able to get the fire flow down into Gannett, down into mine. Even if it was brand new. Even and if it's it was not, brand new. Right. So it, it made more sense to upgrade the pipe um, because we vastly increased the flow by going from a 6-inch to a 12-inch. Instead of going two times, you're probably getting four times the flow, or you know, you're getting a lot greater flow through there. And and it's it's somewhat of a balancing act on uh, is cleaning versus replacing. Um, sometimes it's a little cheaper to do one versus the other. Um, and if if you don't need to replace it, it's less intrusive in the community if you don't have to replace right. it. Right. That's why I, I don't know if some residents had really known what was going on five years ago or so, but that's what was being done, and it would you know, a lot less disruption to traffic. Right. It, it is, it, but the costs are, they get up there. You spend a lot of money when you do the, the cleaning and lining. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the product seems good, but I, I feel a lot more comfortable with a new pipe in for if, if you're going to make that investment. Um, you know, sometimes you can do it, but you don't know the quality of the pipe the whole way down. If there's a <coughs> defect somewhere in the pipe, the pipe may be cleaned and lined in 10 years down the road, you might have a blowout with the pipe because it can't, can't handle the higher pressures from the new, say, pumper trucks. Yep. And the Just only other thing I want to say is this 5% isn't going to operations. It's debt service. So that's really what the 5% is for. Mm -hmm. It's the debt service. It's not that the operating budget, as Al said, Jim's doing a great job down there. But all of your 5% this year, you saw in his budget when you did it, is for the debt service. That's coming in these That's a good point. And on top of that, it is an enterprise fund. Yep. So it is not impacting the tax rate, it's impacting your water. <coughs> Mr. Danny? My, my um, only observation, you know, you bringing in these two props, I, I, I think you can see the disparity and, and, and frankly the improvement when you're having water going through a smaller pipe that's served its useful life for over 100 years. Um, there's, there's definitely a need for a, a change. Um, on top of that, you run into a situation where maybe the town should have been maintaining these much earlier 40 years ago 50 years ago 
30 years ago, whatever it may be. So now, you know, this is the time that we have to pay to fix what we didn't do in years past. Um, the only thing of caution that I'm thinking of is, is that I know that we talked about this five years ago about improving it and, and going up 5% each year. And I know, like, uh, between the average that you have here is about $18. So, I mean, yeah, it's a difference probably around $80 in the past five years, which, for all intents and purposes, is, is marginal if it's improving the water quality. And I know I've heard a lot of people down in Lighthouse saying that, you know, that's absolutely necessary because the pipe is so small, keeps breaking, it's, it's fracturing all over the place. So we need to continue to do it. I just sometimes get a little nervous because we're increasing and increasing and increasing it. These numbers will continue to creep up. And, um, you, know, um, you know, I look at Plymouth, a lot of people probably in Plymouth have their own, you know, well water. So, I mean, we can continue to increase it. I'll, I'll support it. But I'm saying I think we got to also continue to look at that in the next few years and say how much are we continuing to increase? Because over a span of five or ten years, you're increasing it by 100 <laughs> percent or something. That's all. But I mean, I think the people are very satisfied. They're happy to see the water quality improve. And if it means less brown water, I think everybody, including myself, would say, great. You know, it's worth the money well spent. So good job. Nice uh, props. Just I, one question for you. Um, have we done any sort of revenue estimates with our new sprinkler policy and what the impact may have on that? Or can, or can we look into that for the out years to see, um, obviously, with the, uh, um, people's, the, the high users paid a much higher rate, and that's going to have a, an impact on the revenue of the water department, and we want to just yep. keep that. And obviously, that won't go in effect this year, but next year right. um, it may have a... As a matter of fact, what we've done is our, our revenues, we've based our revenues over the last couple of years on, on our lower revenue years. Uh, uh, this year that we've just completed, or just about to complete, I had, I know, I, it was a windfall year. Uh, the revenue in the water department is uh, considerable compared to previous years because of the amount of uh, irrigation that was used last year. And that was with a complete ban and with a half and half. Um, so we'll see what, what, we have some years of non-high irrigation, so mm -hmm. we'll see what that does for us and right. we can do a projection on that. So this is a motion for a one-year 5% increase? Correct. Mr. Murphy. Move the board select and vote to increase water service and usage rates by 5% effective July 1, 2011. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's now, unanimous. So this, is a, this was a 5% increase in this year's rates. That's why talk. Yes. Correct. Ongoing. Yes. 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 Four, four year 2000. Starting July, starting one, the motion said starting July 1, 2011. Okay, good. Sorry. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you very much. I can fix the problem up later. All right, moving on. Uh, <laughs> item number 11 <laughs> has been There's posted. two of you and there's two pieces of pipe. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Here you go. Thanks, Kevin. Go. Right. <laughs> item number 13 has been postponed. Um, move on to number 14, which oh. is a drain layers license renewals. Would you like a motion, Tony? Uh, I would, unless is anyone, no parties are here for it, so yes. Well, they're renewals, that's why yeah. I was, right. you know, okay. Move the board of selectmen vote to renew the following drain layers license applications. Jeffrey K. Morse, E.L. Margots and Sons, Rock Excavating and Dandell Construction. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Um, not opposed, sorry. It's unanimous. <laughs> Brain cramp. Okay, Whatever. so now um, <laughs> the annual appointments. Mr. Murray, I, you are the clerk, I believe. All right, I'll start going one by one. Is that how we have to do them, Kim? Yes. Um, move Patricia Vincasey as the affirmative action officer. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, move to Wait, move to on. reappoint George Trafton to the Affordable Housing Trust. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Daniel Hoffman to the Affordable Housing Trust. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 And folks, um, for some of the committees, I'll make sure I pause. 
in case there's other discussion and stuff. Like so that. those were the only applicants and the only and they were both the open right. positions. Exactly. So when we get into ones that are three applicants for two positions, then, then we'll I'll just pause and we can discuss if someone else wants to make a motion. Why don't you? Why don't, as a suggestion? Why don't you uh, list both individuals if they're within a within? Yeah, a, right. And instead of going one at a time, that way we can kind of. If there's if there are options, like for the next one, you could probably name them both for the same board. I'm supposed to do them one at a time. Can I do them one at a time, or can oh, we vote? Me. You, you, know, you could do that. You well, could oh, I can do both. No, I think the point. Aggregate it. Yeah. Actually, if point of order, yeah. if you have no changes to the first page, you can just vote it off. So, I guess my point is, are there two positions open and two applicants for two for animal control? Yes. Until yes. we see the next page. And where there's any, um, where there's any, if you go to the next page, if there's any more people than there are positions or any, you know, some are at large or some are not at large, Kim has put this together very clearly okay. laid out. Okay. Right. So where it says, like, this person's name and this board and reappoint, there's one slot and there's one reappointment. And there we go. Right. And even if there was a situation for instance, on the Animal Control Board, where there was a new applicant, it would show that here. would not be on this page because there were three for two. Well, it's right on the bottom. I would have said no. She would, it would show right there. But look, just as for affordable housing, for example, there's still, regardless of the two applicants we just nominated and appointed, there's still two positions open on that trust. Right. But there are no applicants. But there are no applicants. Right. Exactly. So now it's at the end. Right. So uh, move Dorothy O'Connor to and Nancy Toll to be reappointed to the Animal Control Board. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move Elizabeth Foster as, to reappoint as the archivist. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to reappoint Russell Clark to the Board of Health. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to reappoint Greg Harris and James O'Hearn to the Bylaw Review Committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to reappoint Christopher Matthews to the Board of Registrars. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, for the cable TV committee, there are two appointment two slots available. One is a reappointment. Move to reappoint Kathy Meeker to the cable TV committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to recuse myself from this one. Okay. There is a new uh, applicant. Move uh, Kathleen Ann Bollock to the Cable TV Committee. Second. Uh, Bullock. Bullock, sorry. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Read nothing. Okay. Um, move to a reappoint Judith Byrne Ariel as the citizen representative to the scholarship committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Paige Tobin, Commission on Disabilities. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now for the CPC, uh, the first four as listed um, are the are the appointees associated with their home board, if you will, like Planning Board, Historical Society, Recreation, and Conservation Commission. And then after that, we'll do the uh, at-large positions where there's more applicants than there are positions. Um, I'm sorry, can you say that again? So. I was I was reading something else. Okay, so these first four here are the um, recommended representatives from their from another board. So, for example, William Limbacher from the Planning Board. So he's the Planning Board representative as a voting you. member yep. to the Community Preservation Committee. Okay, and that's what the first four are. And then the others are down below. We get into the at-large positions where there's more people than there are slots, and there may or may not be discussions. So. Um, as we will discuss later, there's, we still need a housing authority representative candidate, but I would like to move to reappoint as the planning board member of the Conference Community Preservation Committee, William Limbacher. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to reappoint Harvey Gates as the Historical Society member of the Community Preservation Committee. Second. Second, Mr. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to reappoint Richard Lane as the Recreation member of the Community Preservation Committee. Second. Discussion. Um, I'd just like to know, has Mr. Lane been going to these meetings? I know that there were some issues in the past, and I just want to make sure before he gets appointed for another term that he has actually been going on behalf of the Recreation Department. I can't speak for the going to the CPC meetings, but recreation he has been attending. 
and he was rec Yes, Ms. Dunner. Okay. Okay. That's. I just want to make sure. And I've, I have not been going to every meeting. I've been to maybe three in the last four months or five months or something. And he's been. In, he's happened to be at each of those. Now, is he, is he the recommended liaison of the board? From yes. Rec. That's from correct. Rec. Okay. Yep. So, so there's I a think motion. And a we second. have a motion. Yes. Second. 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 Yes. Yeah. For the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Frank Snow from the Conservation Commission to the Community Preservation Committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now, Kim, just to make sure that we <coughs> uh, understand this, there are four, let me make sure, there are four at large positions. Correct. Two members who are currently at large are requesting to be reappointed. If we choose to reappoint those two, then there are two other new members we would appoint. And if we choose to not reappoint those two, then we would have four. Okay, so I would move to reappoint to the at-large positions on the CPC, John Bullman and Paul, John Bullman. Second. Uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I would Hold further on. move to reappoint Paul Scott as an at-large member of the Community Preservation Committee. Second. Um, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so having reappointed those two. Um, Let's just pause so anybody that wants to make a motion. No, I just want to make sure I understand the number. I'm not going to make any names yeah. here. Just make sure we're all on the same page. Um, having just appointed those two, we have two remaining at-large Community Preservation Act positions. And we have four people who have expressed interest, and those four are Lisa Fenton, George Trafton, Steve McGuire, and Ruth Wagner. Yes. And so we can pick two, one, or zero of those. So we don't have to appoint anybody. We can appoint one of them. We can appoint two of them. Because you have two other current members that want to be reappointed. We just did that. We just did them. There's two. No, Paul Paris and Kevin. No, that's Huff. that's Concom. Con -con. Oh, yeah. That's so the next one. We need to pick two of those four candidates. Yep. So just so we just don't keep reading down the list. Now, does anyone want to make a motion? I can't make a motion. So does anyone want to make a motion for one of those four candidates? I move um, appointment of George Trafton um, to the um, CPC. Second. Second. Uh, discussion he was the gentleman that is also on the affordable housing trust is that correct correct and we appointed him there church has experience in this area he's actually was um, liaison before in the past for um, housing authority um, right. you know like I say 40 years experience uh, 40 years living here it's not like he's he understands the dynamic of, of the um, CPA and the committee you know I, I, he'd be an asset Right, so he was the liaison when he was on the housing, housing committee. A, a housing, uh, housing authority. Authority, I mean, not the, and he's now on the trust. So we have a, uh, a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? So it is unanimous. Okay, and... Um, so there's one more slot for the other three candidates. Yep. I would nominate... Well, I've done a lot of nominating here. Sean, you want to nominate anybody? Or you want me to nominate somebody? No, it, 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 it's, it's difficult. Um, Ruth Wagner, I hadn't known uh, until tonight. She looked very qualified. And we all know Lisa Fenton and, and her history with the town. And, um, I know that people have spoken favorably of Lisa, other people on the board. She's applied in the past. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion to appoint Lisa Fenton. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Other than what did what was Ruth's answer to possibly serving on another? I, you know, aging, yeah. Well, you she know, was very, very competent. Very right. Right. You know, unfortunately, you know, thank you did all she for playing. So was Steve McGuire. I mean, did she say aging? Yes. But she said this was clearly her preference. Yep. Um, 
you know, you hate to see qualified people apply for something and not have yeah. a slot for them. Right. So um, thank you for applying and please apply for something else or apply for this again in the future. Um, although we did get two very good candidates as well. So it's, it's good to have a lot of talent to choose from. Um, move on to uh, the next one. Conservation. So here we have um, two people are up for reappointment. And as our notes indicated, we just appointed somebody new to fill the unexpired term that someone had resigned from. Paul Paris just completed his first three-year term. We have two new candidates, Richard Torsney, who's also applying for Council on Aging, and Maureen Carlberg, who, Sean, you pointed out, had applied earlier. Um, so that's what we have there. So, so in other words, let me get this straight. We have two openings for ComCom, Com, and we have the two people who are looking for reappointment, as well as two Richard months. Torsney and Maureen Carlberg. Correct. Four people for two, two slots. slots. For two slots. Did Mr. Torsney come before us tonight? No. No. Kim? Who? Torsney? Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to remind you that Kevin Tufts had just been appointed probably two or three months ago. Yeah. And it was said at that time that it would be obvious that he would be reappointed. Uh, he filled an unexpired term. Do we need to formally reappoint well, him I don't think. Yes. Well, I don't think we can... I don't think we can guarantee a reappointment. Percent. No, have to be, no, but yeah. but I, that's I'd like. He's to, very interested in being it, and he would like to I do it. Gonna, yeah, he was going to be my nomination okay. for one of those positions. But it so just can't be. It's not given. It wasn't decided when he got it last time. It's anyone could get it right now. So, so make Sean. a motion, and we'll move forward. Move to appoint Kevin Tufts. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. I'm sorry. Thank you. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, it's unanimous. I move to reappoint Paul Paris. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Other, th other than I do recall Maureen Kalberg being, ver again, very qualified. And it's just, like Tony said, it's just tough. Right. And that's where I'd like to talk to her about the Water Resources Committee. Because they're down two. But I mean, I I'm, I'm agree with you, Sean. I'd like to get her in the fold. They're down two people, and her skill set would match very well with that. Right. Do we have a second on that? Yeah. Second. All those I in do. favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. <coughs> Move to reappoint Joseph Allen as constable. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. Sorry. It's unanimous. Um, Council on Aging. So we have. Actually, John, you did a good job figuring out the last one. Oh, wait, so these Richard Mitchell and Carolyn Sachs are for the Council on Aging. Is that Correct. right? Yeah, there's only one position open. Uh, if if we if we appoint slots. the four people who who are yep. presently on, yep. you have one slot open. Right. Okay. So, but that's not the way. So there's six people for five slots. Yep. Anyone can be appointed whether they were on it last year or not. My so, my general my personal feeling is that unless someone has really given us cause to not reappoint them. If they've been a good attending member, you know, someone raised a question if someone was attending meetings <laughs> earlier in this sequence, which that was, was a good me. question. No, I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> Casey tuned in afterwards. <laughs> you know, if someone, if there's attendance issues or other issues in there, then my personal feeling, and others may think differently, is that reappointment is, is in hand. Um, Unless also maybe someone's been on for a long, long time, and, and I mean like a long, long time, not just three years or, or six years with one year off, but then maybe time to bring in some new blood. But well, that's I just would my be personal feeling. The opposite, that I would say anyone that applies has an equal chance to get on, and, um, and it just goes on whoever the five we pick out of these six people. Sure. So Move to reappoint Meg Stillman. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to appoint Richard Mitchell. Second. All those in f uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three more. Move to appoint Joan Powers. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to appoint or reappoint Rocco Cabarrus. Second. Carabas. 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 <laughs> Sorry, <Nice>. Rocco. <laughs> We're going to go with Rocco. Um, discussion? Carabas. All those in favor? 
Uh, aye. 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 It's unanimous. One more to fill. Is that right? One more? Uh, Move to reappoint. Yes. One more, Kim? One more. Uh, Dale Balog. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, so we did that. Uh, move to reappoint Gary Carlo as the agent of veterans' benefits and the custodian of veterans' graves. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to reappoint Patricia Vincasey, fair housing officer. Second? Second. Discussion? <laughs> Discussion? Just kidding. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Neil Duggan as the field driver. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Murray. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to reappoint Stephen Litchfield for the Historic Commission. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Lieutenant Detective W. Michael Stewart as the licensing agent. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to reappoint Patricia Vincasey, local auction permit agent. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Aye. Al. Well, the MBTA, if it's still... Is this still active? active? Yeah. Okay. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Ann Burbine to the Metropolitan Area Planning Council and South Shore Coalition. Second. Quick. Discussion? Aye. Favor? All, all Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you, Ann. Move to reappoint... Joe P. Norton Jr. to the North River Commission and Joe P. Norton to the as the alternate member to the North River Commission. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Move, move to go ahead, Sean. Move to reappoint Joseph P. Norton to the Plymouth County Advisory Board. Second. Second by Stanley. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Ed DeSalvio to the Public Buildings Commission. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Recreation. So here, here we have two slots for one. One person, two slots. Ralph Studley was the one that came in this evening. David Smith was the previous associate, associate member. Whomever is not chosen could be an associate member. Is a note from. Right. I move to appoint. Oh, I don't. Sean, this is your committee. Ralph Studley. To the Recreation Commission. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move to appoint David Smith as associate member, maybe? So we yes, you don't have to reappoint is. that? Okay. Okay. S Situate Council on Aging? Oh, excuse me, Situate Cultural Council? Move to, re oh, Move to reappoint Christine Peters and D.D. Uh, Sprecher to the Situate Cultural Council. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. South, South Shore Regional High School. Move to reappoint John T. Manning for the South Shore Regional School Rep. Second. Second with Tahani. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Mark Sandum, William Limbacher, and Kevin Cafferty, the Street Acceptance Committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Move to reappoint Al Bangert for the surveyor of lumber and slash measure of wood and bark. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> assistant to, Town Move to reappoint Mary Sansonito as the assistant town accountant. <coughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move, move to oh, go ahead. Move to reappoint Alfred Elliott, Kevin Cafferty, Mark Thompson. Dorothy Cook and Karen McDonald on the Traffic Rules and Regulations Committee. Second. Second, Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's Move. unanimous. Move to reappoint Larry Nyland to the Waterways Commission. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And lastly? Move to reappoint John Hallen to the Zoning Board of Appeals as the second alternate. All those second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And we'll just announce uh, the uh, positions that are still open for, uh, there were some candidates, very qualified candidates that didn't get selected. Um, there's definitely other opportunities to serve and I will read them now. now. Um, there are two positions available on the Affordable Housing Trust. 
There are two positions open on the Beautification Committee. There are two positions open on the Commission on Disabilities. There are two positions open as fence viewers. There are two positions available on the Water Resource Committee. Um, and that's it. So if you're watching this, you're already interested in town government, so you might as well apply for one of these. And uh, if you didn't get selected, please contact uh, uh, Kim and she'll put your name on the list. Any other discussion on this item? I will be contacting Maureen Kahlberg and seeing if she's interested in the Water Resources Committee, folks, because she's very number. qualified. Good. I'll mention that several of us were interested in her candidacy. Okay. Moving on to number 16, other business. Sean, I just I had one question for Al. And I forgot to ask him while he was here. You wouldn't know when they're going to final pavement for Hall at Stockbridge and Tilden. Probably in the, I think it's going to be in the fall. They seem to be doing the laterals now. Well, they're, I know they're doing that sidewalk on and Stockbridge. That's going to be open for school next year. So he did, this, um, Sean, it's on the web page. He did an oh. email blast about the settling. Right. And for all of those, there's a date on the, oh, the nice. web page. Oh, nice. Thank you. Great. Good. That, that was all I had, Tony. Not anything? Nope. I'm all set. Okay. Bless you. Bless Sorry. you. Um, uh, the only thing I'll do is remind everybody again um, of the uh, joint celebration of the 4th of July and the 375th anniversary on the 4th at 9.30 a.m. Down at Cole Parkway, it's going to be uh, there's going to be a flyover. There's going to be a what type of ship is out there? Uh, the Coast Guard cutter. Coast Guard cutter. It's going to be a, a fun day, so come down and enjoy it. Um, moving on to number 17, that's exe executive session. Can I have a motion? Oh, moved that the board of selectmen vote to enter into executive session for the purpose of labor negotiations and not to return to regular session uh, this evening. Oh, we can. Oh. Come back out to open, but All right. Yeah. So at least we'll move into uh, labor negotiations. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Or yes. Roll call. Roll call, actually. Aye. Yes. 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 Good night, folks. Thank you. Zach, thank you.